I see Dr. Ghazani has uh, joined us, so uh, he can go ahead and unmute. Uh, and uh, again, I'll just briefly uh, introduce him for those of you who don't know. He is a past president of the Italian Association of Orthodontic Specialists and the Italian Board of Orthodontics and the European Board of Orthodontists, as well as past editor of Progress in Orthodontics. He's obviously written numerous articles, and many of them in, in JCO, uh, as well as a book and conducts research on molecular biology and bone regeneration, among, among other things, of course. Uh, and he has been a, a member of our editorial board uh, for a long time. Uh, I think uh, you can go ahead and share your screen there if we can get rid of uh, Dr. Kimes' um, presentation. Uh, so we're, we're honored to have him. And uh, again, we will do questions in the chat um, if you have any questions, you can type them in there at any time. And uh, when we get to the end, we'll go back uh, and look at the chat for any, for any questions. So, but anytime, you don't have to wait to the end to type your question. You can type it at any time. All right, so go ahead, Dr. Ghazani. Thanks a lot, Phil. And uh, uh, this is going to be a presentation on something that is quite uh, popular among orthodontists, uh, talking about uh, anterior anchorage control. And I want to stress that this, is some, ma this material will be material that Dr. Antonio Manni has produced. And I only put together, studied, and uh, prepared the article. And the reason why I wanted to present this is because, for me, it's really new and very interesting for the normal clinical orthodontics. And so class two has of are the most frequent malocclusion in orthodontic practice. And uh, often they are due to mandibular deficiency. So what we would like to do as orthodontists is make the lower part of the face come forward in order to obtain a facial improvement. So in this presentation, we will uh, talk about how to favor pogonian advancement how to prevent lower incisor proclination, how to prevent upper incisor lingualization, and then we will draw a few conclusions. Now, the appliance I'm talking about is this type of appliance that we call MTH, and it doesn't have any premolar band, it has a vertical control, and has one mandibular anchor unit, but this mandibular anchor unit is removal is not cemented on the teeth. And that is exactly what is the situation when the, the, the appliance is in the mouth. The patient can take it out and brush the teeth and then put it back. Now, we, uh, why we like this appliance that I think is, uh, is in the market, I think as American Orthodontics is producing. Now, we did a research because the problem with uh, Herbs, they broke, they break, they, you know, they have some uh, uh, complications. Now, we compared the MTH with the normal herbs, and we had a small number of clinical complications. And not only, but 99% of the cases were manageable with complications that were just uh, they didn't require to remove the appliance. And we did publish on the angle orthodontist a few days, a few years ago. Now, what we do when we use herbs, we use herbs in class twos, we want to correct the occlusion and we want to advance the bugonium. And this is a case with the class two and with the herbs in place and is a, you know, a little weak class one, but still acceptable. The problem is that at the end of treatment, the pogonium is exactly as it was at the beginning of treatment. So the only thing we had was tooth movement. That is exactly what we don't want. Ideally, we would like the teeth to maintain their position within the bone and the bone to move and advance. Unfortunately, in reality, what we're gonna have is that the lower incisor 
move forwards and the upper incisor move lingually. So the overjet is invaded by the teeth and that somehow doesn't allow the pogonium to express itself. So, and that is pretty clear and that is, there are different re references. Now, proclination over incisor and retroinclination retro of upper incisor reached mainly a dental correction of skeletal pattern. So what we don't want. So question is how to prevent lower incisor proclination. That basically there are two ways. One is destruction in the lower arch. The other one is skeletal anchorage. Today I would like to talk about skeletal anchorage. And this is the way Dr. Manny was doing skeletal anchorage with a mini screws in between the premolars and a bottom on the canine. There is no, nothing on the appliance. Everything is on the lower arch, nothing on the appliance. Mini screw and bottom on the canine. And this is a clinical case with a class two deep bite and the appliance on with when you see the bottom, that means that sooner, immediately they will go and put the mini screw in. And as you can see now, we, the mini screws are in at the end of treatment. And you know, the, you can see that there is a solid class one on the mowers and on the canine. But what is more important is that there was some expression of the pogonia. And we did a research on a group of patients and we published this a uh, while ago. And we were able to demonstrate that there was a slight lower size of proclination. So in other words, if you put a mini screw, the lower incisor is maintained in position, but not enough because mini screw moves. Mini screws move. So if the mini screw move, also the incisor move forward. And that is exactly what is described by Dr. Liu. So the mini screw are moving. Now, the great idea of Dr. Manny was inserting something that was not rigid. So in other words, he was putting a elastic chain between the mini screw to the bottom on the canine. And while the mini screw was moving toward the canine, the canine and all the dentition was, were moving lingually. So there was somebody that was moving lingually the, minis, uh, the incisors and somebody, the, the herb suppliers that was trying to move it uh, the, uh, backally. So if these two force somehow get in balance, the teeth didn't move, the incisor didn't move. So now you can see mini screw and bottom on the canine with an elastic chain. And it is a case just to demonstrate what was what we what Dr. Mani was doing with the, in, the lower incisor quite inclined, class two, and proclined lower incisor and pogonia that was not expressed. He was inserting mini screws elastic chain and herbs. You can see mini screw, elastic chain, bottom on the canine and herbs. This is at the beginning and this is at the end. And you can see that the pogonium came forward and, they, uh, and the class one was quite solid. But the best is the the, the self where the can, the incisor was were not proclined at all, and the pogonium were advanced a lot, as you can see in this picture. We did publish also this type of patients against a control group, and we were able to demonstrate that a better control of the incisor frame with a great mandibular skeletal effect. Now, 
just the same year, my friends Julia von Bremen, Bjorn Ludwig, and Sabine Roof published this paper on the European Journal of Orthodontics on the same topic. topic. So they were using mini screws and herbs appliance. And in their, in their cases, they were, so they were not able to see any advantage. So they wrote that mini implants, anchorage cannot prevent anchorage loss during herbs treatment. We think that there is a little difference and that is very important. You know, the mini screw in, and in Dr. Mani appliance is connected to the dentition of the lower arch. While in the von Beremann study, the mini screw is connected to the herbs. And that can create some problem because every single time you move the, uh, the, uh, the herbs, the, the, the mandible, the, the herbs is acting against the, the mini screws. So we decided to run another study. Uh, one study was, this study was with the standard herbs, another one with the elastic chain, another one with the metallic ligature. And we were able to demonstrate that we, if you use the standard herbs, you have a, a more or less 20% of a skeletal effect. While if you use elastic chain, you have 70%. And if, you've, if you use metal ligature, you have 40%. So the, the insertion that's of a elastic chain, which seems to be a very small thing, it can, became to be very important. And we published that on the AJODO five years ago. And there was, with the mini screw and elastic chain, there was greater skeletal, skeletal effect. Now, the problem is also the upper incisors, because if they invade the overjet, you, the, there is less expression, expression of the the uh, Pogonium. And so we ran a study on this. We wanted to see if uh, the incisor position control was somehow connected to the mandibular response on in growing patient, of course, in class two patient. And that was a quite complicated study, but we pub that was published in May this year on the AJODO. And basically the study came out with that the dental, the overjet correction and the mandibular advancement are inversely proportional. So if the teeth correct the overjet, there is less mandibular advancement. If the teeth don't correct the overjet, there is more mandibular advancement. In other words, if you have this type of movement of the teeth, you have less advancement of, of the pogonium. If you control the lower incisor, but not the upper incisor, what is gonna happen? You have, you have more advancement of the pogonium, but still there is the upper arch that is invading the overjet. Now, if you put a mini screw also in the upper arch, and you maintain the upper anteroposterior position of the upper arch, what you could have is the complete pro, uh, expression of the pogonium because the teeth doesn't, do not invade the overjet. Like in this case, you have a class two, a hyperdivergent case with no expression of the pogonium. And using mini screws in the upper and in the lower arch, what Dr. Mani was able to produce was an advancement of the pogonium and, and a vertical control without, without moving the nasolabial angle, because that is another problem. So we have a class one, is pogonium expression and nasolabial angle that is not uh, open. 
And this is the self and the pen of this patient. And this is a superimposition made in a quite, you know, strange way because I did it myself to try to find out what happened with this case. There was a quite good expression of the progonium. And no, there was no movement of the upper incisor, no opening of the mesiolabial angle. But what is quite important was, of course, SNA was not retruded. It was even the, the SNA was more than the beginning. And in the low and the inside, the upper incisor was maintained. SN Pugonian improved and maintained long term, while the lower incisor moved from 98 to 96 and then remained almost stable. And the, there was also a control of the vertical. And we did publish that finally on the JCO in 2019. Now, the, uh, another group was analyzing the, pa the patients of Dr. Mani, and they published the results on uh, AJODO in 2019. And they found a very big advancement of the Pugonium. It was just a pilot study with a few patients, but and it was they were not selected by at all. And also the upper arts was slightly moving forward. So in conclusion, uh, mandibular and maxillary incisor anchorage control, anchorage control can enhance mandibular response in class two treatment. And it's very important that you do not invade the overjet. If you maintain the teeth where they are, you have more expression of the pogonium. So in other words, our father of orthodontics, Charles Tweed, was right. If you control the lower incisor and you control the upper incisor and you control the vertical, you have more expression of the mandible. And if I have to give you a take home message, if you wanted to maintain some anchorage, try not to use a fixed uh, in, in a metal a metal ligature, but try to use a elastic chain is because mean the tads move. And if they move, they also the your anchorage unit is, mu is moving. So you have to do something more than fixing it everything. And now in patient with class in class two patient TADS plus elastic chain could, could be utilized to increase anchorage in using a uh, different thing. Also, we have we did publish also uh, mini screws with class two elastics, but that is a, another ball game. And now you know I like to finish my presentation with a thanks to everyone that uh, listened to me. Right. No. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to add for the people who, uh, yeah, there we go, uh, for the people who came in as you were talking, uh, we are going to do questions through the chat. Uh, so those of you, I'm assuming, just about everybody is probably familiar with Zoom at this point, but uh, if you're not, the on the bottom of the screen is a little chat bubble. And you can pop that open, type your question into the chat, and we will read it off of there. It's just a little easier than muting and unmuting um, uh, people. Um, it's, as you know, tough to tell sometimes. You don't know that you're actually still unmuted, uh, but everybody else does because we can hear you. Uh, so uh, any questions, you go ahead and, and type them into the chat. Um, and... Uh, we will read them off of there. Um, so I guess I can uh, just ask for uh, Dr. Kazani while, while we're waiting. Um, oh, I see one just came in there now, actually. Um, what about low angle cases? 
And that is a very good question. And uh, if you have a low angle case, of course, you cannot reduce the vertical dimension. And of course, you have to do something. Usually, you, when you have a low angle crisis, you have also a deep bite. And uh, what usually was done is uh, open the bite, create some overjet, maintain the overjet, and try to advance the mandible if it's in class two and if you want to uh, advance the pronium. So, in other words, if you have something like a class two div two, what you do if you want to use this technique, because that is very important to understand. If you want to do, use this technique, you have to create overjet, and so open up the, uh, the 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 bite, and then use the the this the same technique. Right. Thanks. Uh, I was I was going to I'll introduce my question now since uh, <laughs> someone else jumped in. Uh, Especially, you know, in, in today's age, is, I, I have a daughter who will soon be doing orthodontics, and she knows all about aligners already, uh, not just because she lives in our house. Uh, and, you know, her friend has them. Um, and I, I wonder, just curious, with an appliance like that that does take up so much space in the mouth, um, how do you tackle convincing the patient that this is the way to go? Um, as opposed to if they're coming in thinking, oh, I'm, I'm going to be able to do orthodontics and I'm not going to have, you know, these days you don't have to have all these big contraptions in the mouth. How do you, how do you convince them that uh, you, in your case, yes, you, you do need this? Okay. Uh, when you do and you want to convince, actually you don't have to convince, you show the patient what are the plus and the counts of a treatment. If you I'll give you an example. If you have a nasal label angle that is uh, 90 degrees or open and you use class two elastics or any other type of, of uh, appliance that somehow bring the incisor back, what is going to happen? You're going to open the nasal label angle. And if the patient accepts to do this, it's not a problem. Otherwise, you can say, listen, you can maintain it. We can try to maintain the nasolabial angle and try to somehow let your progonium express. And to do this, you have to do this small thing. And, uh, you know, you, you never, you know, convince the patient. You tell the patient what, are, what is the problem, what are the ways to solve the problem. And every single time that you use something, you have pros and cons. And together with the patient, you decide what are the pros, the cons that he or she can accept. And you could talk very openly. You know, they, our, you know, for me, my uh, duty is to explain what are the pros and cons and try to understand what is the best appliance for this patient. So, in other words, there is, there is always an ideal treatment. And then there are some compromise treatments. My job is to find the optimal treatment for that patient. You know, so in other words, is you know, I am tailoring a, a suit on the patient. But I, in, in order to do that, I have to discuss and explain what is going on and understand what they want. I treat, you know, the same malocclusion in different ways. So I didn't see any other questions, so I'll, I think we'll end here. Thank you, Dr. Ghazani, very much for your time. Uh, and I hope everyone has a good rest of the virtual AAO.